think this is all of us. And if you, can you hear? All right. Okay. I'm going to read some scripture to you. I brought my iPad because the rain can do a number on your Bible. So if it ruins an iPad, that's okay. We're going to read, first of all, from Ezekiel. Don't worry. He quoted this to me, so I'm reading it to you. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast, and set him for a watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet, and warn the people, then whoever, whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, and took not warning. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word of my mouth, and warn them from me. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I'm just going to read a few verses. For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself? So likewise ye, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? Another short reading from 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. One final trumpet from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds mm -hmm. to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I trust the Lord will bless the three and a half minutes I took to read his word. I do want to speak to you, though, on these different trumpets that we read. I want to speak to you about a trumpet being given. Mr. McElwain told me a few days ago a story about an older gentleman that he preached with. His name was Mr. Brennan. Obviously, I never met him. But he died when Mr. McElwain was just a young man. The last time Mr. McElwain saw him, he was taking him to the train station, I believe it was in Bridgewater, Nova Scotia, because Mr. Brennan was going home. And he said goodbye, Mr. Brennan was actually going home to die. He was going home to heaven. And he turned to Mr. McElwain, who was just a young Mr. McElwain then, only in his teens, and he quoted these verses from Ezekiel chapter 33. I have set you a watchman. Blow the trumpet and warn them from me. I think you've heard already today that Mr. McElwain used the gospel trumpet well. He was given a work to do and he took it seriously. And 
He took it not just from Mr. Brennan, who it seemed was passing on the torch, but he took it as from the Lord, that he was commissioned to do something. And whether he was working in a mechanic shop, he preached the gospel. Whether he was working in a carpenter shop, he preached the gospel. Whether he was working in a body shop or flying an airplane, to all that he came into contact with, they heard the sound of that trumpet. He took very seriously, warned them from me, I have set you as a watchman. And he was given a silver trumpet. But we read of him using it. For we read in 1 Corinthians 14, and don't worry, I know I'm taking it out of context. But the truth of it doesn't change. The people in Corinth were, were, were speaking wrongly. They were uttering words that nobody understood. And the apostle corrects them and he says, It's common sense. If the trumpet gives an uncertain sound, nobody will be warned. Well, he knew that. And I challenge anybody here to tell me of a man that gave a clearer sound in the gospel. I can remember as a boy sitting listening to him preaching the gospel and trembling, afraid I would be in hell without a savior. And I can remember many a time as a man working with Mr. McElwain at conferences and at different places when he preached the gospel. I often shook my head and said, nobody can preach it clearer. He preached a very clear gospel. There was no uncertain sound to his trumpet. You knew exactly what he was thinking, exactly what he was saying, and he had he was a master, not just at words. There's many a wordsman. But he was a master at communicating what he had on his heart. He got the message across. And whether it was eloquent or not eloquent, he did get the message across, and you understood very clearly just what he was talking about. He spoke very clearly on man's ruin. He never praised men up or people up. He told us plainly we were just sinners on the broad road heading for a lost eternity. He made it very clear. But he told us about the remedy for lost sinners. And I know you can go in your mind the same as I can go in my mind and listen to him speak on the work of Christ on the cross. Mm -hmm. Right to his dying day, he never got over it. He wondered at it. I can picture him lying in that bed in the hospital. And you don't know what he's thinking. Nobody knows what someone else is thinking. And he'd just shake his head and the tears would start running. And he says, wonderful. It's wonderful. That he, he died for a sinner like me. He loved to tell about the work of Christ. And all that the Lord Jesus passed through that sinners might be saved. How he bore our sin in his own body on the tree. How he suffered for our sins that he might bring us to God. He went over and over that so many times in the gospel. He used the trumpet well. He told of man's ruin. He told of God's remedy. But before he was finished, he made it very clear that you and I have a responsibility to either accept or reject what we just heard. Mr. McElwain was given a very good trumpet and he used it well. But I've read about another trumpet. <clears throat> this is called the last trump. The trumpet of God is what Paul calls it. God's great trumpet. And this isn't a trumpet that's given. Nor is it one that's used yet. But this is one that's anticipated. 
were waiting to hear this trumpet. And guess what? He is too. For the dead in Christ will hear it. Their ears have been tuned to hear this trumpet. And every soul that's died in Christ, every person that's died in Christ, is anticipating a great sound, the sound of the last trump. You know, he used his trump well. There's, there's actually two trumpets in 1 Thessalonians. There's one in chapter 1. From you trumpeted out the sound of the gospel. From you came out the word of the gospel. He used that one well. And when you get to chapter 4, he's awaiting to hear this trump. God's great trump. Mm -hmm. Are you waiting for that? I am. Mm -hmm. I hope you are. Because it'll change your life. Even as believers, it'll change our lives if we're waiting to hear that last great trump. Our ears are tuned for a sound we've never heard before. But we'll hear it. I would take it that Paul draws the analogy of this trumpet from the Old Testament. For the Israelites were given a trumpet, and they were to sound them on six different occasions at their at their feasts and at their times of worship, at the times of war, war. There were six different occasions, but there was a seventh. And I find this interesting. The seventh time they were to use the trumpet, it was called the last trumpet. And it was when they were given the sound to march, to move on, to pack everything up as they move through the desert and move on. That's the last trump. When we'll pack everything up, we'll say goodbye to everything, and we'll move on. To many people, the graveyard is the end. It's the end of life. It is. It's the end of labors. It is. It's the end of service. It is. Oh, but it's not the end. This is not the end. We are waiting for the beginning. It's all going to start with a trumpet. And the man that we lay to rest, whose body we lay to rest today, I don't know who closed this coffin, but I'm going to tell you who's going to open it. God will. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. And listen now, the dead in Christ shall be raised first. And our beloved friend and your beloved father and grandfather is going to rise again. And we, which are alive, if we're still living, and we, which are alive, we're going to rise to meet them in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, I seek to comfort your hearts with these words. While we say goodbye here on earth, it's only for a little while. And we will meet again. Let's pray. Our Father, we bow in the lovely name of the Lord Jesus, and give thanks that God ever sent his Son. We thank thee for what Christ accomplished at Calvary when he laid down his life for poor, guilty sinners like us. We thank thee, Father, that Mr. McElwain, as a young boy called Robert, had a time in his life when he trusted the Lord Jesus as his Savior we heard of that today. We thank thee that he heard the voice of God speaking to his soul through John 3.16, and he trusted the Savior who died for him at Calvary. We thank thee for this tremendous truth. And for everyone here today, we pray, Lord, that they would know Mr. McElwain's Savior as their Savior. 
We pray for the family. You'll miss him. He was a large figure in their lives. He was used mightily of God. He was used on this island. He was used in these maritime provinces. And his work remains. He was used across Canada and the United States and even across the ocean. We thank thee for a life well spent for God. And we do pray, Lord, that thou wilt comfort the hearts of thy people and his own children and his grandchildren. And with every memory they have of him, may they remember that though they love him, God loved them too. Mm -hmm. And God has taken them home. We thank thee that he's at home with the Lord. It's wonderful to think about it, that a man who could have been lost in his sins was saved by God's grace and taken to be with the Lord Jesus. We give thanks for his life, and we pray for the family, and all of us that will miss him. We pray that the comfort of God would be real as we give thanks in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I was speaking to him. Okay. I was speaking to Brother McElwain the other day about the Lord Jesus. Actually, he was speaking to me about the Lord Jesus. And I was bent down by his bed trying to hear what he was saying. And the tears were rolling, and he started to say, Wonder. Wonder. Isn't he wonderful? So I began to sing. And I think most of you know that chorus. So let's sing it. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Isn't Jesus my Lord? Wonderful. Eyes have seen. Hall is open, the washrooms are open, if anyone needs them. 